Hey folks, this is Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. And alongside me today, good friend and uh, brother in the Lord, Pastor Conrad M. Bewe. He is the pastor of Kabwata Baptist Church in uh, Zambia, and he also is involved with African Christian University uh, there as well. Conrad, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Thank you. You, you uh, have been pastor there for how long, Conrad? It's now 34 years. I've just entered my 35th year. Wow. That's just amazing. And at the same church the whole time? Yes. Yes. Uh, it was a small uh, work when I, I came in. I was part of the team that planted the church when I was a student. Went away to work, and then they invited me to come and take up the pastorate. And I've basically been here since then. Well, well, we sure enjoyed having you at the Village Chapel uh, recently when you were here for the Sing Conference with the Gettys. And, and of course, that's how we came to know one another. And uh, I'm just so grateful that you would uh, uh, be willing to uh, join us on the podcast today all the way from Zambia there. And uh, I love uh, the fact that the Lord has given us this opportunity to chat. You, you've chosen a psalm, Psalm 32 for the day, correct? Yes, it's one of the sounds that I really love. Thanks for the opportunity for me to share from it. Please, please go ahead. Yes, well, uh, I often think of Psalm 32 as a twin psalm of Psalm 51. And Psalm 51 does give us a background to why it was written, that it was in the context of uh, David committing uh, adultery with Bathsheba. Psalm 32 does not give us any background, but as one reads it, one tends to sense something of a similar journey uh, mm. that uh, gives rise to Psalm 51. And what I love about it is that it begins almost as though it's beginning from the end. So when the psalmist says, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Basically, he is making a statement that anyone who is now walking uprightly with God is in a state of fulfillment, a state of satisfaction, a state of blessedness, that there is nothing like that in the rest of human existence. So you, you begin on that note. And um, what is interesting there is that after that, then he enters his own story, basically saying, that's not the way it was with me all along. There was a time when I lived in the opposite way and paid for it dearly. And that's what he goes into when he says in verse three, for when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. And basically, that's a graphic illustration mm -hmm. of uh, a person who is under conviction of mm -hmm. sin. He's trying to hide his sin from human beings and not wanting to acknowledge it before mm. Almighty God. But wow. then, as a result of that, there's no peace, there's no joy, there's no freshness, mm. there's no um, energy in his own life, in his own being. He ends up being the kind of person who's always irritable, very difficult to get along with, losing his temper at almost anything, finding fault with everybody. So basically, that's where he was until he began to realize this is not the way to live. Uh, or as we often say, there must be a better way to, to, to make a living than this. <laughs> so, yes, amen. Yes. So like the prodigal son, you know, let me go back to the father. Let, let me go and deal with this matter that has caused all this. And so he says in verse 5, I acknowledged my sin to you 
and I did not cover my iniquity. And that did not cover my iniquity is basically when it says, in whose spirit, in verse 2 at the end, in whose spirit there is no deceit. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and wonder of wonders. In admitting one's sin, you forgave the iniquity of my sin. So wow. that's really the joy, ultimately, of yeah. uh, the, the grace of God that is not mm -hmm. asking you to sort of round the run around the block 10 times before <laughs> you can be um, forgiven. He's mm -hmm. simply saying, come as you are. Ah, Acknowledge beautiful. your sin before me. And obviously it points in the New Testament to the finished work of Christ, that he has done it all. Yeah. That's the fullness of God's revelation. And therefore, you simply come just as you are, and God deals with the rest. What the psalmist, David, in this particular case, does is having seen the benefit of being um, transparent with God, yeah. he now turns around basically and speaks about how everybody else needs to function in the light of this experience and truth. He says that, therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. In other words, in the midst of uh, the emotional turmoil, mm -hmm. the person will not be drowned by that. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. And then the, it is you surround me with shouts of deliverance. In other words, <laughs> the hallelujahs. God, right. you have done it. God, you have been good to Amen. me. So really, he's saying my experience ought to be shared out by everyone who is working with you. And then he takes it upon himself to be an instructor to others. And I think in many ways, that challenges me that in my walk with God, I should not have too private a religion, mm -hmm. but that God is enabling me to walk through all these things, both negative and positive, that I may be a witness to others, mm -hmm. that I might in the process therefore be able to teach others. And so it says they in verse eight, I will instruct you that, well, this is God now for the time being, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. And then he says, be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. And then here is his own um, teaching or acknowledgement. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. That steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Mm. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. And that's what we should wow. be doing, really. Yeah. Not just keeping it to ourselves, but imploring others. Ours is a good God. And therefore, let's encourage everybody else to walk in the fullness of this God and his grace. And for us, we can add in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Because we know that our sins were not counted against us, but they were counted against him. Mm. And therefore, we are clothed in his righteousness. There we That's are. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Um, I love that this, is, this isn't just a, a bit of bad therapy telling us to just go scream out into the night sky, but it's we're actually going to the Lord. And, and when he invites us to come to him and to confess our sins, uh, as you have pointed out, we know this, this psalm is so beautifully telling us what the response from God will be, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and that there is a full and free pardon awaiting us 
All we need to do is to come just as we are, acknowledging what the Lord himself has done for us through another. And for us, it is not a, an animal sacrifice. It's the finished work of Christ. That's so beautiful. Well, I love that. I love that last verse, too, the way you pointed out. Be glad in the Lord. Rejoice, you righteous ones. Shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Um, uh, that just, what a, what a great, hopeful uh, ending to this psalm. And for anyone who might be listening today who's been struggling with their own um, uh, wrestlings with temptation or sin or besetting sin, um, what great hope we have here in Psalm 32. Uh, thank you, Pastor Conrad. I wonder, would, would you close us in a, in a prayer for all of us as we uh, begin to navigate this day together and, and, and in so many different places around the world, but with the Lord and walking with Him? Yep, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we can go into your word and see how those who have gone before us have uh, wrestled with the same issues we wrestle with. Mm -hmm. Discouragement, family trials, weaknesses, and even sin and yet be able to come back to a God who comforts, who upholds, a God who forgives, mm -hmm. and therefore find in you our all in all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that that's what we see in David in this psalm. And therefore, with all his failings, weaknesses, and sin, he's able to still say, I have found blessedness. And much more than that, appeal to other people that this is where we should all go, to his God, mm -hmm. as we go through all the challenges of the day. And even today, as we go to work and some remain at home and attend to so many other duties, help us to remember your grace, the grace you give us in the person of your son, the ultimate sacrifice in whom our sins have been fully paid for that they are counted against him, and therefore we can be truly blessed. Oh Lord, remind us of Christ, 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 through all the hours of this day. In his name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. Pastor Conrad Mbewe from Kabwata Baptist Church in Lusaka, Zambia and also from the African Christian University. Thank you so much, Pastor Conrad, uh, for joining us today and I encourage all the folks that are listening or watching. Uh, you can find uh, plenty of uh, Pastor Conrad's teachings on uh, online, YouTube and the like. And uh, we're so grateful uh, for you, dear brother, and uh, pray the Lord continues to use you in, in powerful ways. We'll hopefully have you back on the podcast again sometime, okay? Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks for having me. Bye -bye. God bless you. God bless you. See you. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.